Hi everybody, my name is Jacob Tomlinson. I'm a software engineer at NVIDIA and I work on open source libraries, uh, including Rapids and Dask. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to be going through how to visualize and, and monitor what your GPU is doing, which is really important when you're getting to grips with, with uh, open source Python uh, libraries that the GPU accelerated. You need to understand what your hardware is doing uh, whilst you're running them. So Rapids is, is a suite of, of open source Python libraries which uh, allow you to, to use familiar Python APIs um, but access the GPU and, and get some acceleration through that. So if you're a Pandas user, you can use QDF. If you're a scikit-learn user, you can use QML uh, and so on. There's also uh, like a bunch of other popular uh, libraries that kind of fall under the Rapids banner uh, that are part of the open source community. So you've got QPy, which comes from the Chainer community. And you've got Number. Um, You've also got all your deep learning libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow. All of these things are kind of uh, popular within the PyData ecosystem. Um, but sometimes when, you, when you're working with CPUs and then starting to, to accelerate your work with GPUs, um, it's not obvious how to really understand what's going on uh, inside the machine that, that you're working on. So uh, we have um, a bunch of packages that you can install. A lot of things come with, with Rapids. So if you head to the Rapids website, um, there are instructions here on, on installing Rapids. You can install it with Conda um, from, the, from the Rapids and Conda Forge channels. Um, you can grab the Docker image and run that, whatever you, whatever you like to do. Um, but uh, I've gone ahead uh, and set myself up with an environment running the, the standard Conda install command uh, from here. I've also installed MV Dashboard, which is a, a Python package um, and JupyterLab extension, which, which fall under the, under the Rapids banner. Um, so it comes in like two components. You have a, a server-side extension, which is used to like query the GPU, and then we have a JupyterLab extension for viewing viewing plots and, and things in, in the web interface. Uh, so you can go ahead and install that directly uh, with pip and, and the JupyterLab extension tools. Um, we're also going to have a look at Dask's integration with GPU monitoring as well. So we have the Dask Lab extension, which uh, similarly has like a, a Python component and a, and a JupyterLab front-end component. Um, which allows you to understand what's going on inside your Dask cluster. And Dask has some, some knowledge of, of uh, what is going on in the GPUs that it is, is scheduling on. So I've got all of this installed in an environment, um, and we're going to jump straight over to JupyterLab now to try and figure out what my GPU is doing. So I have, I have a few plots open already on my screen here. Um, and they, this is a combination of things from MV Dashboard and from the Dask Lab extension, so we can try and see what's going on. I also have an example notebook here, which is going to mainly just stress the GPU so we can see, what, see what's happening. Um, so at the beginning, I'm going to import a uh, local CUDA cluster from Dask CUDA. This is because the machine that I'm working on has two GPUs in. Um, so I want to make use of both of those. And Dask is great for scheduling onto, onto multiple cores. And in this case, it can schedule onto multiple GPUs in my machine. I'm also using Dask QDF. So uh, QDF, as I said before, is this, this GPU accelerated pandas uh, API library. Um, so you can do all the kind of standard stuff you would do in Pandas, but it will run on the GPU. And by using Dask QDF, this will be distributed across across my Dask cluster. So let's get these things imported. Um, and I'm going to create myself uh, a cluster. So this is going to inspect my machine, see how many GPUs I have, and then it will start one Dask CUDA worker per uh, GPU. So we can see in, in our little visualization here, we have two uh, workers that have been created. We can also see in our cluster map down in the, in the bottom here that you can see the scheduler in the middle and our, and our two workers. And this is kind of to visualize how they're communicating with each other. So I'm now going to read in some New York taxi data. You know, it's a nice open data set that's easy to, to, to get hold of. So I'm going to read in some of this data. I'm going to load it into GPU memory. I'm going to calculate the length of it, see how many records we have. And then I'm going to do a describe of it, uh, just, just something to make the GPU busy, right? And I'm going to call time it just to kind of make it go around a few times. So if I run these cells, we can see in, a, in the top right here, the GPU utilization uh, and the GPU memory of our two GPUs in, in the machine. You can also see the machine resources plot below that, which is showing CPU memory, disk bandwidth, um, network communication, etc. And, and at the very bottom, we can see the task stream. So these are all the function calls that Dask is making on our GPUs. And there's kind of two rows in this for our, for our two GPUs. So this has given us like a nice overview of what's going on inside this machine. We can understand um, what's happening as, as things are, are running. But let's kind of pull this all the way back to basics. I'm going to close out all of these, these views, and we're going to start kind of from scratch to see how this stuff works, how we're getting this information, and how we're displaying it. So uh, I'm going to close all of these panels out. 
we'll come back and, and kind of open them as we as we build through later. I'm also going to move this uh, over to the side here, um, just so that uh, we've got a little bit more room. So I've got this notebook here. What is my GPU doing? And we're going to use um, some low-level libraries to get information about the GPUs and then build up some of our own plots and dashboards. So the first library I'm going to be using is called PyNVML. NVML is, is a way of querying the GPU for different statistics and metrics um, about the devices. You can install, uh, PyNVML has like a, a driver side component, which comes along with the, the NVIDIA driver. And then you can install the Python package uh, from pip. So I've already installed this. We have pip install PyNVML uh, to get the package. I can import this and I have to uh, init the package as well. So it's kind of instantiating it, creating communication uh, with the, the driver. We call this once uh, whenever we kind of uh, want to use, use PyNVML. So often it's done immediately after import. We can now query things about the system and about the individual devices. So let's start by just saying, what is the system driver version? Um, so if we call pyNVML.nvml system get driver version, it's reported back. I'm running driver version 440.100, which just happens to be you know, the, the latest driver that, I, that I've installed. Um, we can also query what is the NVML version, um, if you want to kind of dig into to what features are supported in NVML. This is NVML version 10 that's come from driver 440.100. Now we can also query information about the devices. So first let's say, how many devices have we got? Device uh, get count. So I'm working on, on a data science workstation. It has two Quadro GPUs in it. Uh, so device count has come back to say we have two, two devices available to us. We can query each one of these devices independently for different information about what's going on, how much is being utilized, how much memory is being used, etc. Um, we do this by first uh, constructing a, a handle. This is kind of like a pointer to the, to the device. And you do this by, by passing in an index. So I have two GPUs here. Um, so I, they, I will have two indices, zero and one, um, depending on the number of GPUs you have in your system. You know, this is just a, a zero counted array. So you create your handle uh, using device get handle by index. Um, and this will give us back this, you know, this, this pointer object. But we can then use that in, in further calls to, to specify which device we want to query. So we can do uh, get device name and pass it the handle. And it should report back that this is a Quadro RTX 8000 GPU. And that's kind of like a, a property of the device. It is that is its name. But we can also get metrics about what the device is doing right now. So for instance, I could do device get temperature and specify the handle. I also have to specify which which temperature sensor I'm interested in. And I, I think in this case, there's only, only one, but we still have to specify the index uh, of the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna specify zero here. And I've wrapped this up in, it, in an F string just to add you know, degrees C to the end. So if I call this, it's showing that that GPU is 33 degrees C. Um, so this is really nice. We can kind of go through, we can query things. There's like a whole bunch of different things that you can, you can ask of, of a GPU to understand what it's doing. Um, and you can do this all within, within Python. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to collect like a load of information about each GPU kind of in one go and then format that in, in a way that we can kind of explore it a little bit more. So I'm going to import pandas um, and uh, date time. And then I've got this function that I've written here called get data for GPU. Um, you pass it the GPU index, just kind of like how we, we had to pass the index to construct the handle. But this function is going to manage making the handle for us and then querying a bunch of things about the device. Um, so we're going to return like a dictionary of, of different properties that we've requested. So we'll set the timestamp um, just so we know when we've queried this, because you know this is a snapshot in time. We've said before, what is the temperature? That's the temperature right now. So we'll record the time that we've, we've requested this. We'll record the index of the GPU that we're, we're referring to and uh, get its name. Um, I've just decoded the, the byte string here uh, into a regular string. But then we're going to query some more information about the, the device. So we can do device get utilization rates and get the, the GPU utilization property here, um, which is, is a you know, 0 to 100 percent. How much is this GPU being used? We can also query uh, how much memory is being used and how much memory that we have total. Uh, we can do this by calling the device get memory info uh, function. And then we've got a used and, and total property here for accessing that. And we can also get information about how the GPU is communicating. So, you know, these GPUs are connected to the CPU via a PCI Express slot. So we can ask, you know, what is the transmit um, speed and what's the receive speed at the, the throughputs? Um, 
at the moment we can say you know what is the the pci express like max generation supported of this card and what's its, its bandwidth limit and things so we can ask that kind of stuff um if your gpus are connected via mv link you can get information about the you know the the, the link connection directly between the devices as well um, and then i'm also querying the temperature so i've got this nice function you call it you give it the index and it gives you back a dictionary of, of information about your gpu so let's run it now for my first gpu we can see you know, the utilization is still zero because I'm not doing anything with it. Uh, but we can see we've got some memory being used from, from reading in our taxi data before. Um, you know, the PCI Express isn't doing anything because the, the GPU is idle. But we've kind of got all this back in a nice dictionary, some nice uh, information about the GPU. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that function. I want to call it for each device I have available uh, in my machine. So I have a list comprehension here. It's just going to range over the device count and call get data for GPU for each each device. So you know this will work if you're I you know, have a machine with two GPUs in. You may have a workstation with more. You may be running on the cloud where you might have one, two, four, eight, sixteen, however many GPUs. This you know you can use this kind of approach to ask how many GPUs there are and then get your metrics for each GPU. Um, this is giving us back a list of these dictionaries and then we'll pass that to pandas to, to make us a data frame. So. If I call get data here, we now have this, this nice pandas data frame with our two Quadro RTX 8000s that's in, in my machine. Um, index 0 and 1, uh, we can see they're using you know, slightly different amounts of memory because they, they work through this task graph um, in order to, to you know, work with the taxi data. Um, and you can also see that the temperatures are slightly different here, right? 33 and 35. So I guess this is, I don't know, maybe an airflow thing in the, in the case. Maybe one has got better airflow than the other slightly. That's great. We can go and grab all this information about our GPUs, but this is a, a snapshot in time. This is what is happening in my GPU right this second. Um, whereas what we really want to know is, is you know, what's happening over time. How are these, how are these devices behaving? So my next cells here, um, I'm going to record some data over time. So for 10 seconds, I'm going to record 10 samples per second. I and mean, I'm going to do that just by calling get data and concatenating it onto the existing data frame to just keep appending a couple more rows. This is why we added that, that timestamp before. So we're kind of taking a, a snapshot um, each time to create ourselves a, a time series of, of information. And we're just going to sleep for 100 milliseconds each, each time we go around. So what I'm going to do, let me just uh, slide this back again so we can see both notebooks clearly. Um, I'm going to start this cell running, which will record for 10 seconds. And then on the right hand side here, I'm going to run through the same, the same thing again, right? I'm going to read the taxi data and put it into memory and, and do some things to it just to make the GPUs busy. So let's start that and then come over here and run those. So while that's running, we can just see we have 84 million rows here. Uh, in, the, in the CSV files, this is just the yellow taxis for 2019. Um, and it takes about a second to, to call describe on, on the GPU for, for one of these columns. On the left hand side, it's finished now. We've got this large data frame. Um, and we can kind of see if we already have a peek at the, the utilization column here, you know, utilization starts out at zero. And then as I called these different operations, it's going up 26%, 25%, 29%, et cetera. Um, so now that we have this, this time series of, of what's happened over, the, over those 10 seconds, let's have a look at some plots to see what, what really went on. So we're going to use matplotlib and, and pandas built-in plotting here. Um, first, we're going to do group by the GPU index, so we can see a, a line for each GPU. And we'll first have a look at the memory used. So uh, if I call this, we can see um, we started out high because we'd already run that taxi notebook, right? So we already had this data loaded into memory. But then I redefined it just to you know, kind of make it do something. So it unassigned that variable, memory usage dropped, and then it read in the CSV file again, and the memory usage uh, grew again. Then we can do the same for utilization. How busy is the GPU in terms of, of computation? So we can see early on, um, there's like a, a lot of usage, and then uh, it kind of goes down to a bit of like a, a spiky usage. Now I know that this happens because uh, when we read in a CSV file with, with QDF, um, GPUs actually are very good at reading in CSV files. Their CSV, because it's a text-based format, you have to do like a bunch of type inferencing on each kind of separation within the file. Um, and that parallelizes really well on a GPU. So there's like a big intense burst of activity at the beginning as it's reading in this CSV file and putting it all into memory. Um, and then we're asking it to do this describe over and over. So you can see the GPU kind of bursting in between and you know the, the high points are when it's when it's doing the describe and the low points is when it's you know feeding that information back to, to time it or, or whatever. 
So this is great. We can like record what's happened and see how much our GPUs have, have been utilized for different operations. But what would be more useful is if we could see in real time, what's my GPU doing uh, right now? So to do that, we're going to use Bokeh, which is the same uh, library that we use in the, in the dashboard we, we saw earlier on. Um, and we're going to create a plot uh, in Bokeh and then update it in real time. So let's just import some, some things from Bokeh. Um, I'm going to define a couple more functions here. So I've defined uh, get GPU names. This is going to query both of our GPUs, uh, calling that get, get data for GPU function from before. Um, we need to give each bar in our plot a unique name. So we're going to we have a, a format string here, which is going to take the name and the index and kind of pull it together into into a unique name for that device. If I call this, we should get a list of our two uh, Quadro RTX 8000 and Quadro RTX 8001. Uh, I'm also going to write another function here called update plot data. And this is going to do the same thing. It's going to, uh, for all of our GPUs, it's going to request that data dictionary from before. Um, but we're, for now, we're just interested in the utilization. Um, but in theory, you know, you could grab whatever information you want here. So we're just going to return a list of the, the utilization rates for the, the GPUs. So if I call this uh, here, you can see you know, they're idling at the moment. So they're both at 0% zero, zero utilization. But this list is, is the same. Uh, length is the, the list of names. And these are the two inputs that we need now to, to create a bokeh plot. We'll create ourselves a, a column data source from uh, the names and the utilizations. Uh, we'll create ourselves a figure uh, and just you know specify the height and the title and, and things like that. Um, and then we're going to add a, a bar plot to this and say I want to display the, the GPU utilization as bars. Um, here's the source data, here's you know the fill colors and, and things like that. And because utilization is showing a percentage of utilization, we're going to set the Y ranges to, to you know, 0 to 100. Um, and now we can show the plot in our notebook. But I need to just capture the, the target for that plot because we need to come back and update it in a minute. So you can do that by assigning uh, the output of show to a, to a variable. So if we call this, uh, we get a plot here, GPU utilization. Um, and we can see our two GPUs. Uh, neither of them are doing anything at the moment. So there aren't, you know, the bars are uh, both at 0. Um, but this is like a snapshot, right? We, we took that, we recorded that information, we've created this plot, we've put it on the screen. But now we need to like continuously update this. My last cell here is like a while true, update the, the column data source with new uh, information about how the GPUs are performing, um, push that to the notebook uh, to update this plot, and then sleep for 100 milliseconds. If I call this, this cell is now going to start running, this is blocking. Um, and this GPU plot is updating now, but we're just the GPUs aren't, aren't busy yet. But now if I come back over to my, my taxi notebook and run these same cells again, we should see that plot spring to life um, as the utilization goes up. Great, so you can see you know, it's loading that CSV, now it's doing those describes, both GPUs are, are being used here. And we've got like a, a good view onto, onto what's going on. Um, but we don't you know, this isn't like a practical solution of, you know, you open this notebook and run it through and, and have this plot. Um, this is why we've taken it this next step to create MV dashboard, where we've taken code pretty similar to this, wrapped it up in, in Bokeh server, so it like runs as a, a standalone application. I can actually, I can do it from here, so if I just uh, interrupt this uh, and run uh, MV dashboard, this is a Python package that we installed, but it exposes this MV dashboard uh, bash command. I call this, it will start like a standalone Bokeh web server. Uh, and I can navigate to that in my browser. So if I just head to the uh, address and go here, um, we can see we have like a bunch of Bokeh applications running code similar to what we did before. But these are plots that show memory usage, utilization, all of the GPU resources aggregated together, all of the machine resources. So this is using PSUtil to get the, the CPU usage and the memory and, and things that we saw earlier on. Um, there's also some plots for MB Link and PCIe uh, throughput as well, so you can see how the GPUs are communicating with each other and with the CPU. So you know, if I open up GPU utilization, um, you know, we can see that plot is not doing much. We have a look at GPU resources. Uh, these are like time series line graphs um, that are being updated as well, and you can kind of see a bunch of a bunch of GPU things uh, in one go. So this in itself is like a useful tool if you have a machine uh, that's remote to you that you want to get. You know, view some dashboards to see what's going on. You could install MV Dashboard, log into it, run the MV Dashboard command, which will start the server, and then you can open it in your web browser. Um, but for us, this is like the first piece to getting the JupyterLab extension uh, working. So 
as well as being able to run this from the command line, you can install the JupyterLab uh, front-end extension, which gives us this uh, panel over here on the left with a little GPU icon. And we can see the list of these same plots. Um, and this has a, a Jupyter server extension. So when you start Jupyter, it runs that bokeh server automatically. And then in the front end, you can see these buttons. And when you click them, it opens up a new, a new panel, which is basically like iframing in these, these plots we looked at a second ago. So if I open up the GPU utilization plot here, um, we can see uh, that and the memory. Let's see GPU memory. So we've still got some taxi data in memory. Let's open up all the machine resources as well that we could see before. So this is great if you if you want to see, you know, I'm running some work, it's a mix of GPU code and CPU code, and I want to see how busy is the CPU, how busy is the GPU, where am I getting bottlenecked, and, and that kind of thing. So if I run my taxi data, we should see these, these plots busy doing things. Um, you know, they've kind of got some thresholds and things, so you can see, you know, the bars go red if you're using a lot of GPU, etc. Um, you can also see the CPU is kind of busy there uh, in, in doing that describe. So this is uh, MV Dashboard. It's great for seeing your resources on your machine, either you know, locally or remotely. But because we use DAS to create our cluster, because DAS can pull together um, you know, multiple GPUs on multiple machines into a cluster, um, we have some other plots that, that are, are useful for seeing what's going on. So we have our task stream here. Um, let me pop this down the bottom. Uh, just going to restructure my windows a little bit. Slide that over. Slide that over. So we have a task stream. Um, I'm also going to uh, open the, we had the cluster map plot as well before, didn't we? So let's open the cluster map and the task stream. This cluster map is showing us a topology of our, our scheduler and workers in our DAS cluster. If you're on, on a larger cluster, you would see more workers. Um, and the task stream is showing us kind of how functions are being called uh, over time on our two, two workers here. You get, you get a row per, per thing. So if I, you know, if I run this compute again, we can see all our read CSV tasks going on here, um, all of our, our describe here, and you can see all the communication going on. So these workers are communicating, um, I think via PCI in this case, um, and the tasks are all, all being dished out. So that's a great way of seeing what's going on. Um, Dask, because Dask supports multi-node as well, we can have a, a look at what, uh, if, we, if we ran Dask workers on multiple machines, kind of aggregated them together into a Dask cluster, Dask has got some built-in metrics for viewing what is the GPU utilization, what is the GPU memory, etc. Now, the way that I've set things up here is a little funny. Um, I actually have uh, both workers running on the same machine, so uh, we're actually going to end up with double results here, but I want to show anyway. Uh, we have like a, a Dask plot for GPU utilization and GPU memory. I'm going to run this again. Um, you actually see four rows because I've, I've doubled things up with, with a couple of workers. Um, but this is great if you have like a big cluster of machines, you can get a good overview of, of your total GPU usage rather than, than what's just on your, on your machine. Um, so that's it for, for the demo. I, I hope this was useful. You kind of saw these different plots that we have, different things you have access to, and how these things are, are built up from, from the ground with, with OK. So future plans for this project. Um, I showed that we can use Dask to view uh, res resources on multiple machines in a cluster, um, but you're not necessarily going to be using Dask for, for everything. And so while it's useful when you are using Dask, if you're using something else, um, we want to add support for multiple machines in, in Envy Dashboard so that you could you know, maybe start Envy Dashboard on a, on a few separate machines and then have another one which, which aggregates the results into, into like a, you know, a, a mega plot. Um, we also need to make some improvements to the, the Dask integration. As you saw, there's a bit of doubling up. They, those two workers didn't realize that they're, they're sharing each other's resources and things. So um, there's a few things we want to do in terms of uh, improvements, but, but hopefully the tools are kind of uh, ready. Uh, so just to recap what we've gone through in this talk, uh, PyMVML is a Python library for querying GPU metrics. Uh, PyMVML can be used for, for building uh, like time series and grabbing information uh, and, and, you know, then using matplotlib or whatever to draw graphs of your GPU usage. But then to take that a step further, MV Dashboard uh, uses Bokeh to display in real time what's going on inside your GPU. Um, you can use GPU standalone as a Bokeh server, or you can use uh, MV Dashboard as a, as a JupyterLab extension and view right inside your JupyterLab session. DAS can also be used along with its lab extension to view what's going on in a, in a cluster of machines. So thank you very much for your time. I really hope this has been useful. 
Um, I wanted to share what we've been working on in terms of, of tools for visualizing what's going on inside GPUs. But I also hope that these open source libraries will inspire others to go and build other dashboards for other things that you care about that's happening in your workflow. You know, maybe you are training some models and you want to keep track of certain values as time goes on. Maybe you're writing those to, to a file or something. You could build your own dashboards that are kind of taking in these metrics and displaying them. Um, Jupyter plus Bokeh plus whatever tools you, you want to use for gathering metrics are excellent for giving, giving user feedback in JupyterLab. So please do take those libraries and um, you know, run with them and, and build anything you can. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.